Did you think what I just said at the end of the last video didn't make any sense? You're thinking, Jerry, how can being right be a bad thing? When I started out in 2014, I was certain that Bitcoin would be worth a lot more. I was certain that cryptocurrency markets were a really good thing. When I started out in 2009, the Bit in 2014, excuse me, Bitcoin started in 2009. When I started out in 2014, the Bitcoin price was $600. If you can see the screen today, it's $3,400 today three years later. I was certain Bitcoin would go up a lot in value. And so I started buying some and I started buying it. And guess what? It went down to 500. So I bought more. It went down to 400. So I bought more. It went down to 300. I bought more. It went down to 200. I bought more. It went down to $170 and I bought more. Finally, I got so impatient. I got so scared and afraid. I sold all my Bitcoin which for just over $200 to make a little tiny profit on the Bitcoin I'd bought at 170. I think I sold 30 or 40 Bitcoin for seven or $8,000. Now you see, if I had that 30 or 40 Bitcoin today, that would be worth over $100,000. You see, I was exactly right. I was right. The Bitcoin price was going to go way up. When though, in three years, actually it started going up a lot in two years. You see, when I started buying Bitcoin, I wasn't prepared to hold it for two years. Or what I would have done is just started buying a little bit every day and just planned to hold on to it. But what I wanted to do was make a lot of money quick. I turned it into this ego gambling trip which you might be thinking is reason to not even get started at all. One of my friends said, I don't even want to get started with that. He's got a good sense of his boundaries and limitations. He said, you know what? I don't want to even do anything with cryptocurrencies because it's just like gambling. And he recognizes his own tendency to get involved and to do the same thing I did. And what I shared with him is I've had a gambling addiction. I've struggled a lot. You used to find me in the casinos getting liquored up, playing Texas Hold'em, three card poker at the craps table. And sometimes I'd end up over at the roulette wheel or that really stupid thing you spin around and it has, as I won, I hit that one a few times, but really stupid. So I've had my own struggles with gambling. And when I started out with cryptocurrency investing, it was just like gambling. And that's one of the biggest traps you can hit going in. Either side of that, you cannot go in at all and say, well, it's just gambling, so I'm not going to even participate. And on the other end of it, you could say, I really got to get in on this because I'm going to make a bunch of money fast. Now, you might not verbalize that, but the truth is, if you got honest and sat by yourself quietly, that would be the truth. I'm going to make money. Huh? This is going to, ho, 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 man. That's one of the biggest traps is to get in and make it all about being right. And where I'm at today, I think this entire cryptocurrency market cap is going to be way higher than it is today. I think this thing's just going to go to the sky, but I don't know exactly where. I have a guess. I think this, what might look like a long shot at 20th, I think this one is going to actually take over number one in time. Now, not necessarily tomorrow or anything, but this, the Steam is the only one of these I see that's ready for mass adoption. It's in position to be used by the masses because you can start out with it without actually buying any cryptocurrency. And that's a big advantage because you can't get started with Bitcoin or Ethereum. You can't hardly do anything with most of these without buying in. You can start out on Steam with nothing and actually earn money on it. It's a social media network and blogging website also. Meanwhile, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, these just are for sending transactions. You have to build stuff on top of them, which adds a huge additional layer of complexity. Also, it's about how many of these you're using. Therefore, the main strategy I think is really good to do is to pick one of these you love and buy and hold it indefinitely. 
at least a year for tax purposes and a minimum. You see, that's what I did start doing with Bitcoin after I sold all and lost. And then I watched the Bitcoin price go from two to 300 and realized I sold and did the exact stupidest thing you could have done. Then what I did is I started having a more reasonable outlook. I looked at it and said, how, when I had no money and I said, how can I get involved and make a plan that won't turn this into gambling? So I did then exactly what I recommended. I recommend if you want to get involved, find one of these you absolutely love and are willing to hold on to indefinitely and buy a little bit of it every day. And that's what I started doing with Bitcoin when it was at $300. I started buying a dollar an hour of Bitcoin, $24 a day of Bitcoin. And then at one point, I turned it up to $50 a day when it was around $400. And I just kept buying a little bit of it every day. And all of a sudden, $25 a day by the end of 2016, I had almost $10,000 of Bitcoin when the price was half of what it is now. And then I invested it in another currency, which the price of that has went up 20 times since I started buying into it. I sold it after it went up about eight and a half times. And then I turned in $25 a day. I turned that into $87,000 with four months later. Now you might say that was lucky, but I also did go all in on one cryptocurrency I believed in, and then I sold out of it because I didn't want to be in that community anymore. Therefore, I I realize you might need to change positions sometimes. You might find you might join Steam after all that I talk about it in the rest of the course. You might think it's so great, and then you might get a crappy response. You might think it sucks. Then at that point is good to either work through it or to change over to something different. I believe going all in on one is ideal. Yes, I realize a diversified portfolio has a lot of advantages, but I have made the most of my money going all in. I made thou I turned hundreds into thousands with Bitcoin. I turned tens of thousands into almost a hundred thousand on another currency. And now I'm looking to turn 50 plus thousand in steam into millions of dollars given a few more years and steady work on it. Therefore, one of the biggest traps to avoid is trading. Well, thanks, Jerry, for getting into this right when I was about to stop watching. Trading is one of the very biggest traps to avoid. Trying to buy and sell on a daily basis is one of the stupidest things I've ever done with cryptocurrencies. And now, even though I have all kinds of knowledge, even though I'm in a great position to trade, I could say, for example, when the Ethereum price was just down under 190, I easily could have bought a few thousand of that, sold it, and made a few thousand trading. I easily could trade now, but I don't. I don't trade because trading takes a lot of time and energy. And the worst thing that happens when you trade is you get lucky and actually make some money and then you invest more and more and more in until finally you get completely cleaned out on something and come to the humbling realization that the other players in this game are mostly not very good at it, but there's a few people who are absolutely cleaning up and wrecking with trading and they take almost everyone else's money, just like in the stock market and they take almost no risk doing it. There's automated trading algorithms that you'll run into that you put an order in and it automatically puts an order in above yours. If you know how to essentially guarantee that you'll win the game, then you are in good shape. If you don't know the recipe to guarantee that you will win the game, that no matter what happens, worst case scenario, you'll lose a small bit. Best case scenario, you'll consistently make a bunch of money every day. If you don't know how to do that, then you are not in on the secrets of winning the game, which to me, the very best way to trade seems to be to get a good, a strong automated trading algorithm set up where you can actually just make money trading between different prices on the exchanges or to make money trading automatically using another system. 
no risk or very low risk and consistent profitable rewards, similar to high frequency trading in the stock market. A whole bunch of money made, almost no risk taken. If you're not doing that, in my opinion, we have no business trading. I don't trade because I don't want to make or lose money trading. I don't want to be obsessed about what the price is today. Trading is one of the most tempting traps there is in terms of these. And uh, I've seen a lot of people following me that I talk about this and they say, you're right, Jerry. All I've done is lose money trading. I don't know how anyone makes money. I've seen other people. They said, Jerry, I bought in. I made a bunch of money. I put more in and then I lost all of it. That's what that's trading for you. You take it from me. I've traded a lot before and I don't trade anymore. Don't fool around with trading. Don't make it about gambling. Instead, pick something you believe in, buy it and hold it. Put an amount in you're completely comfortable losing. If you lose everything, you'll still be okay. At the same time, put the most you can stand in and then you've got an opportunity to do really good when things go well.